that. Circulate to everyone, or? Oh God! You brought your own tissues? Huh? You brought your own tissues? I did. A very bad sign. <laughs> session. This is select board meeting for Tuesday, May 22nd. This is uh, a working dinner, I guess. Um, we have uh, some miscellaneous items. It's a fairly light calendar. Um, and then uh, reviewing a few warrant articles. So uh, let's uh, start in with our miscellaneous. Any public comment? <clears throat> Any announcements? I'll just remind people about the Memorial Day um, event uh, on Monday. Um, bus leaves um, the Veterans Post, I believe, at 8 a.m. Uh, and the ceremony itself, I believe, is at noon in front of Town Hall, but details are on the town webpage. Okay. So let's uh, delve into our calendar. Uh, and we have a, uh, the approval of a donation of $1,000 uh, from the Merrill family to uh, provide funding for the veterans flag program, not to be confused with the um, flag day. That's right. This is veterans flag. Mr. Faison. Uh, Austin Faison, Assistant Town Administrator. 
Uh, this is our yearly contribution that we receive from the Merrill family, um, former selectman Mike Merrill, select board member um, in modern times, um, in honor of uh, his wife. Um, and it would go towards uh, the purchase of some flags for the Veterans Flag Program um, that would be facilitated through the Bill Murray's office. Okay, any questions or comments? I will move that we accept this donation in the amount of $1,000 from the uh, Merrill family to provide funding for the Veterans Flag Program. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. Select person Franco. Aye. Select person Heller. Aye. Select person Green. Green. Aye. And select person Hamilton. Aye. You guys have jumbled me. <laughs> We're testing you. And I'll formally thank uh, the Merrill family mm -hmm. as former Selectman Merrill. He was a selectman at the time. We're now select board members, so we can fly. <laughs> okay. Uh, next item is a question of accepting a traffic enforcement equipment grant. Uh, uh, equipment grant in the amount of uh, $1,650 from the uh, Executive Office of uh, Public Safety for the Drive Sober or Get Pulled Over campaign. Hi, I'm Chief. Mark, I'm Mark Morgan, Police Department. Um, this work was actually already done back in the uh, December period of 2017. Basically, the housekeeping measure to catch up with the uh, work that was done. But, uh, we can't be addressed with the Okay, so we've spent the money already. Okay, so let's formally accept the, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, grant. I presume there's no discussion. I shouldn't make such presumptions. Okay. Um, so I'll move that we accept the Traffic Enforcement Equipment Grant in the amount of $1,650 from the Executive Office of Public Safety and Security for the Drive Sober, sober or Get Pulled Over campaign. All those in favor, please say aye. Select Person Franco. Aye. Select Person Heller. Aye. Select Person Green. Aye. Select Person Hamilton. Aye. And the chair votes aye. And we'll stay where you are. We have uh, some transfers, uh, some internal transfers in the police department, uh, transferring $63,000 from uh, full-time uh, salary to building maintenance, $10,000, electricity, $15,000, Wireless communications, $13,000, and computer software, $25,000. This is a housekeeping item. Yes, Can you tell uh, us about it? We're requesting the transfer from the current full time salaries to building maintenance to $10,000 from the work that they conducted this time about the DBW in and around the uh, police department on the grounds. Uh, the second, $15,000 of electricity is we weren't funded at the same level as the previous, previous year, so that the catch up with what we've spent. Uh, the same thing as the wireless communications, we uh, spend a little bit more money on that through the, the mobile handheld data terminals as far as they, we have the data, but actually that was also what the budget as much as previous years and still, both on the electricity and the wireless, but it's still going to be spending less than the previous years, which is just that to what was previously appropriated. And the uh, last moment, $25,000 is for a, a call logger that, would, that takes the, the incoming call for uh, the business lines, other lines, and this problem sort of gives an ability for uh, COs, other uh, staff to go back and do the calls in real time to see if they got the information right, and I'll make sure they make any corrections that need to be, besides the 911 one, it's easy mm -hmm. otherwise. So that is just out of life expectancy, natural life expectancy of that piece of equipment, we just need to replace it. Okay. So I take it the uh, $63,000 in um, <coughs> salary account is uh, unfilled position? Yes, we have, we, have, we have 17 people in the academy. Mm -hmm. and we have 16 in the academy, one person that's coming on. Uh, and right into the MBTA academy, so we're looking to appoint that individual the next few weeks. Uh, 16 individuals in the academy, one started April 2nd, and the other uh, class of no, another seven individuals started on. That's Monday the 21st, uh, yesterday, and we also still have six vacancies. <coughs> so, so we have additional positions that haven't been filled that <coughs> may be transferred. <coughs> yes. <sir>. Okay. <coughs> or the money could revert to free cash. Yeah. Whichever. Um, 
Okay, I will move that uh, we accomplish the uh, following uh, four internal transfers uh, from a permanent full-time salary, 63000 to building maintenance, 10000 electricity, 15000 wireless communication, 13000 and computer software for 25000 adding up to 63000 All those in favor, please say aye. Select person Franco. Aye. Select person Heller. Aye. Select person Green. Aye. Select person Hamilton. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Thank you, Chief Morgan. And we have some transfers in the uh, Parks and Open Space Division of uh, DPW. This is $20,000 uh, from uh, a permit account, the Muddy River permit account to agricultural supplies, and $20,000 from uh, uh, water to landscape services. Ms. Uh, Gallantine. Good evening, Erin Gallantine, Director of Parks and Open Space. Um, with the, the surplus that we see in these two accounts at the end of the fiscal year, we feel that we can accomplish a couple of initiatives that are part of our goal of being um, green and clean. Uh, the first one is to purchase uh, handheld, battery-operated leaf blowers for all of our crews. Um, these are low decibel. And zero emissions, and um, this is something that we would be able to use um, for probably five months out of our season. So when we're doing significant leaf blowing operations where we need um, higher power um, equipment that operates all day long, uh, we would still be using our, um, you know, our gasoline operated um, <laughs> equipment. But for for a lot of the cleanups that they do, where they're blowing off paths, blowing out under the um, around the buildings and under uh, the shrubbery, we think that this is a great way for us um, to, you know, improve our green footprint, and also we think that our uh, customers will appreciate uh, the lower noise. Are the batteries rechargeable? They are rechargeable, and so um, we are purchasing the batteries and also the charging stations for those batteries. Uh, the other um, item that we're looking to implement is an irrigation management and maintenance system. What we're able to do with this is we can remotely control um, our irrigation uh, and sensors. We can control um, from a central docking station the timing of our irrigation. When it's wet weather, we can actually turn off the irrigation systems instead of now someone manually has to go out to each athletic field and adjust the clock. And then when we want the irrigation back on, they have to do the same. And we can detect leaks. And so um, we think this is a great way for us to reduce um, loss of water. Okay. Good. Clean and green. I like that. Yeah. Well, Any? where does our electricity come from, though? <laughs> <laughs> Let's not go there. <laughs> um, okay. Any questions or comments? I'll move that we approve the two transfers, uh, $20,000 Muddy River permit to agricultural supplies and uh, $20,000 from a water account to uh, landscape services. All those in favor, please say aye. Select person Franco. Aye. Select person Heller. Aye. Select person Green. Aye. Select person Hamilton. Aye. And the chair votes aye. And next up is uh, a uh, architectural con uh, contract with Tolukian. So um, this is a contract with Tolukian and Tolukian. It's an architectural firm. Um, they were our architects on record for the Fish River Reservoir um, project. And did uh, our drawings for the stabilization and preservation of the gatehouse and also construction of the comfort station. So work was done on the shell, the outer portion of the, the gatehouse, but there remains much work to do on the interior. So this is our um, first step towards continuing that work, which will be um, the you know, trim and door trim inside the building. So this is for um, construction docks and construction oversight. Okay. Questions or comments? I'll move that we approve and award and execute a contract with Tolukian and Tolukian Inc. in the amount of ninety-three sixty-one and twenty-two cents for architectural services for the Fisher Hill Reservoir Gatehouse. 
All those in favor, please say aye. Select person Franco. Aye. Select person Heller. Aye. Select person Green. Aye. Select person Hamilton. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and we have um, a question of reviewing uh, the uh, letter of understanding with Boston Children's Hospital. Um, and I understand there. this is a late-breaking um, item. So Ms. Bruton, okay, just Sarah tell Bruton. us what's going on. Yeah, so the letter of understanding in your packets is the same that you reviewed last week um, and that you talked about. You agreed to put in the supplemental package, so it's really something that all the time you guys have already. Um, does not have any language about the shuttle stop. There are three changes that are considered typos in the first page that are reflected in your packets, but not in the supplemental package. So the date is still in the first. The zip code um, had a typo. There was a space between the zero and the two. And in the last uh, paragraph where there's reference to returning the letter of understanding on or before in the package, it said Friday, May 18th, which was last Friday, and we updated that to this Friday. Everything else that you've seen um, last week is in the package. Okay, just for... Uh the viewing public, um, this agreement um, clarifies some uh, items that have come up. One is a result of the uh, request for a canopy and uh, the easement, which is on the um, uh, town meeting warrant, and uh, also um, clarifies some additional items which uh, potentially could have been um, items of uh, controversy, but uh, there are items that are now settled and we have an agreement um, and we know how much we can be getting and how much things are costing and that's a, a good thing. Yes, and um, since last week Children's Hospital has um, signed this version, um, we got an electronic version and we'll merge original copies of signatures so if you all sign to sign this tonight. Okay, any uh, questions? Comments from the board? Yes. Um, during our original uh, discussion last week, the paragraph two, we opted to take out. Maybe this was just said and I might have zoned out. Um, so they were okay with us removing that language? They were. Yes. Oh, great. Okay. All right, good. It took until today, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> there was some back and forth, and uh, the, when it came forth, it came without the uh, paragraph. Great. Um, okay, um, I will move that we uh, execute the letter of understanding with Boston Children's Hospital in connection with implementing the 2014 memorandum of agreement and a proposed can canopy at two to four Brookline Place associated with warrant article 13 for tonight's town annual town meeting. All those in favor, please say aye. Select person Franco. Aye. Select person Heller. Aye. Select person Green. Aye. Select person Hamilton. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Thank you. Thank you for your work on this. Mm. And we have um, we have a couple. We have three. Three licenses. Um, I only have two on my calendar. So G, G and H. G, okay. G has two. G has two, okay. So I will move that we grant two temporary wine and malt, malt beverage sales licenses to Pine Manor College at 400 uh, Heath Street as follows for a corporate dinner event to be held on Thursday, May 31st uh, from 5 to 10 p.m. and for a gala to be held on uh, Tuesday, June 5th from 6 to 9 I'll also move that we grant the temporary all kinds alcoholic beverage sales license to Pine Manor College for a retirement party to be held on Wednesday, May 30th from 5 to 10 at 400 Heath Street. And, uh, and the paperwork appears to be in order and the police department has reviewed the applications and sees no reason to deny any of them. So thank you. So uh, there's the motion. All those in favor, please say aye. Select person Franco. Aye. Select person Heller. Aye. Select person Green. Aye. Select person Hamilton. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Um, okay, let me just collect myself here. 
clear the decks. Move forward. And we have uh, a couple of items on the uh, main calendar. And the first item is, uh, a reserve, is a request for a reserve fund transfer for $200,000 for single stream uh, recycling. And I understand there are some major disruptions in the uh, recycling market, which is causing this. So, uh, Mr. Pap Sturgeon, why don't you tell us about it? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, since we signed the contract from the curbside collection and processing of single stream recycling back in June of 2015, which was for the start of fiscal year 16, uh, that was a five-year contract with the solar waste systems. Uh, the contract pricing involves two separate pricing, one for the collection of recyclables, curbside collection. That is a fixed price with a 2% inflator each year of the contract. So that price remains constant and, uh, and known each year of the contract. It also includes a processing fee per ton for the recycling products uh, based on a threshold of $75 per ton. Now we're dealing with single stream recycling, which means it's a blended product. It's all the products blended into one. The, ind the recycling industry then takes that product and determines what the average blended value is of that commodity uh, based on the various markets they have around the world. Most of the plastic recycling uh, up to now has ended up in China. Uh, the Chinese uh, then reprocess it and use the raw materials from the goods. Uh, the quality of the recycling of the plastics in this country and other places in the world is generally about 2% uh, contaminated, uh, which you would think isn't too bad. 2% uh, the quality is, is 2%. Uh, unfortunately, uh, back in uh, September of this past fall, uh, up until that point, we had been making money on our recycling. The pricing is based on the threshold of $75 a ton. If the average blended value is $75 a ton, then we don't pay anything for processing uh, with health harm. If the blended value actually increases above $75 a ton, the town shares 70% of the profits with the, with the contractor. So we get back a credit uh, of 70% of the difference in value per ton. Now that's where we were for a portion of, of the end of fiscal 17 and the beginning of fiscal 18, we were actually making money uh, to the tune of anywhere from to $5,000 per month in credits we were making back. Uh, in previous years, we had been, at the market, when the market was a lot higher, we had made a lot more money than that. Uh, back in the fall, though, the Chinese decided that they were going to restrict the materials to a quality of 0.5, uh, which nobody can meet. Nobody in the world can meet that quality. They basically shut off all the markets in China to foreign uh, recycling products. So that sent the market into a mad scramble to find a market for, uh, for predominantly plastics. Uh, and there were some secondary markets, such as Indonesia and other places in the Philippines. Uh, but in, in, the bottom line is that the average blended value of, of recycling material as a commodity has fallen through the floor. So in September, uh, we started paying uh, Very, it was a very small amount, it was less than $1,000 we were paying for, for, for the month of September. Uh, and it has gotten progressively worse since then. And I will tell you that for the month of April, we paid $32,000 uh, for the processing of recycling. And it doesn't look like it's going to end anytime soon. The sanitation budget can absorb some of that. We take the credits that we get during the year when we have a good market and uh, we'll go we'll back into the budget. Uh, but we can't sustain total hit such as this. Right now we're projecting for fiscal 18 a, a, a deficit of about $230,000, of which a portion of that I can cover uh, in the sanitation budget, but it's still going to require a reserve fund transfer of $200,000. Have we um, adjusted our budget assumptions for 19? Yes. We have built into the 19 budget 
estimates of where we think the market will be. I have, you know, we, we get monthly reports from our, our contractor as to where the market is and where they predict it's going to go. Uh, we're hoping that it's going to start leveling off now and maybe start to come back a little bit. I'm still not optimistic that, uh, you know, even through perhaps halfway through FY19 that we're going to be in the black. I think we're still going to be in the red. But we've built estimates into the budget of 19 to cover what we think the cost will be going forward. Are there any um, <coughs> options out there to uh, reduce these costs? I don't know what that would mean, but, I mean, for example, Taking certain items out of the stream. I mean, has anyone given any thought to some innovative ways of uh, addressing you know, this loss of a market? I think we're dealing with some of the best private minds in the business when we're dealing with these contractors. They want to make money, of course. Uh, you know, waste management, all waste systems, republic. They're, they're all in the business here to, to, to make money. I'm sure that they've thought of that. Uh, I'm not sure that it's prudent for us at this point to start thinking about removing product from the, from our recycling stream. Uh, I'm actually not even sure that we can do that contractually with them. Uh, you know, uh, we're on the contract for another two years, I believe. So I have no idea what grand ideas this will spur in the industry. I'm sure that they're going to become as innovative as they can. Uh, they were very innovative when they started, you know, manufacturing machinery to deal with blended products. So, so I, I hold out hope that, that something will change in the future. I'm not sure what this will Let me piggyback on that comment from um, Select Board Member Green. I, I imagine one of the things we could do, and I'm in no way advising this, is uh, move away from single stream and go back to separated. It w I would imagine that that would come at the expense of uh, the rate of recycling. We'd see more recyclable products end up in um, the trash. Um, so I think um, I imagine what Commissioner Pat Sturgeon is going to say is uh, you've got to balance cost with um, practicality. Um, and um, from my perspective, this is uh, hopefully a short-term problem that we're just going to have to weather. I, I believe the same thing. I'm not so sure that, that moving from single stream back to dual stream is even doable at this point because all the plants have been retooled and reset up for single stream. And, you know, as the price of recycling gets higher and higher, you know, uh, reducing your commitment to recycling is really not an option because it's now law that you can't put certain recyclable products into the waste stream. You're not allowed to do that. So, uh, you know, just rapid recycling is not an option. So. I don't know where it's going to go. I'm just trying to ride the wave out as best we can so that it gets us in a better position going forward. And I have absolutely no idea what will happen when we have to negotiate the contracts in a few years based on this. Right. And does this uh, paper have anything to do with uh, this problem? Paper? Yeah, the paper's part of it too. The paper market. The paper market started to suffer even before the plastic market. Uh, and of course, glass. Glass is not even in, in the mix anymore. You know, we separate out glass and the glass gets put aside. But the, the only plant that was reprocessing glass in Massachusetts just closed recently. So, you know, we're, we're scrambling to find other markets for glass. And, and one of those potential markets is, is the road business in terms of uh, mixing glass with asphalt. Mm -hmm. so that an right. Is this problem because we are doing so much better job recycling that there's much more material to, to, to deal with and therefore we sort of saturated the market, if you will, in, in, in recyclables? I don't think the volume is the problem. I think the quality is the problem. And when everyone pretty much moves to single stream recycling, it affects the quality of the product. Uh, it wasn't as clean as product that you separated out in a separate form. So I think it's quality for me. Any other questions? Oh, I, I guess I have one. Um, when you say um, contaminated, what what contaminates uh, recycling? 
food, you know, pizza box. Okay. Um, waste that, you know, plastic that, uh, cans that haven't been rinsed. Mm -hmm. the, phones and, and the, uh, the screen, uh, that's contaminated. Okay. So it affects the overall end resulting contaminant level of the product. Mm -hmm. From the Chinese, you know, our product running with one and a half to two percent contaminated, which you would think is pretty good, but then the Chinese say, no, sorry, we're not taking anything that's more than a half percent contaminated. That's, you know, four times more stringent than, than the average. So. Is it possible to wash any of this? No, it may be a dumb <coughs> question, but it's a question. Maybe. <laughs> I'm sure that the processing plants can put processes in their line that could clean it to some certain degree. If we tried forbidding pizza boxes, for instance, yeah, I thought boxes. they all were not allowed. Now. That's what I thought. <laughs> yeah. so why are people putting them in the bin? This is a worldwide problem. This yeah. is not just that. It's not a problem. Only pizza. It's a lack of education. <laughs> okay with me. <laughs> okay, well, I'll move that we approve and transmit to the advisory committee. Uh, the request of uh, Mr. Pap Sturgeon for reserve fund transfer in the amount of $200,000 to be applied to single stream recycling. All those in favor, please say aye. Select person Franco. Aye. Select person Hiller. Aye. Select person Green. Aye. And select person Hamilton. Aye. And the chair votes aye. And uh, you have your vote. And the next item is the biggie. It's uh, the, the snow and ice end of year reconciliation mm -hmm. and this is yielding a reserve fund transfer of uh, almost a million and a half dollars and then some miscellaneous transfers from various accounts uh, within the uh, DPW uh, budget of totaling what about 200,000 somewhere in that range. Mr. Pap Sturgeon. So the total after balancing the books for FY18, the total deficit of snow and ice is 1,678,391. Uh, and that is for employee overtime, equipment maintenance, equipment rental services, snow and ice supplies, which is your sand and salt, uh, and motor vehicle supplies, property damage, and some reconciliation and capital equipment. Uh, so the total deficit was uh, 1,678,391. We were able to uh, scoop up $200,000 in the, some of the salary accounts in public works, primarily due to vacancies or timing issues uh, with wages. Um, and that was in um, all the divisions, with the exception of water and soil, which we cannot touch because of the enterprise. Uh, that, was, that gave us the ability to lower the deficit to $1,478,391. Uh, coincidentally, last year, when I, when I looked at all the numbers, the deficit last year, this which is uncanny, was 1,672,910. <laughs> it's a what this year, 1,678,391 was only a few thousand dollars surplus. <laughs> uh, last, last year, we were, we were able to make up uh, 375,000 in surplus money in the, uh, in the DPW budget. But the, the deficits are very similar, uh, and the, the, hint, the total snowfall was only four inches different from last year to this year. Last year we had 56 inches, and this year we had 60 inches. I always like to take uh, totals for the year and track it to see what it's costing us per inch on an average uh, to see you know what the general trend is. And we're hovering around $38,000 per inch. <laughs> so it's just a fun fact. <laughs> I guess you have to be a DPW commissioner to appreciate that one. <laughs> or, or one of the value of your snow shoveling. <laughs> so anyway, uh, uh, what we're asking for is for you to include the request uh, and to approve transmittal to the advisory committee uh, for the reserve fund transfer. And the appropriation transfer as well because it involves parks and open space division requires advisory committee approval as well. Really? Yes. Transfers out of parks and open space require approval of the advisory committee. Okay. Just, just like a That's list. another fun fact. <laughs> I got lots of them if you want to get some more. <laughs> <laughs> Any uh, questions for the commissioner? 
A uh, question for Mr. Faison, I guess. Um, uh, where does this leave us with the end of year reserve fund? You know, have, or I guess it's a question. Well, okay. <laughs> Um, Austin Faison, Assistant Town Administrator. Um, we still will have a fair amount of money in the reserve fund after this, but I would have to check with Melissa to get you an exact number. So, so, so it's on yeah, it's on the back here. page so of the back. We'll have left after these two transfers you made. Oh. So, uh, and I'm not aware of any other major requests, but uh, I think 609,000 should, should carry us. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, um, any questions, comments? Got to spend the money. Yeah. I will say that um, I think DPW does a great job with the snow. I know people like to complain, but. Um, I guess that's the nature of the beast, but uh, I think generally uh, uh, this town does a great job with snow snow removal. Yes, so. it does. Yeah. And sidewalks. Right. So let's uh, move that we approve and transmit to the advisory committee the request of the uh, DPW commissioner for reserve fund transfer in the amount of one million four hundred seventy-eight thousand three hundred ninety-one dollars for snow and ice. And then I'll also move that we approve the following six transfers within the Department of Public Works appropriation from salaries 40,000, engineering salaries 40,000, roadway salaries 95,000, street, cl street cleaning salaries 25,000, motor equipment maintenance salaries 10,000, school ground salaries 15,000, forestry salaries 15,000 too. Snow and ice overtime, 200,000. So this is an omnibus motion. All those in favor, please say aye. Select person Franco. Aye. Select person Heller. Aye. Select person Green. Aye. Select person Hamilton. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Thank you. And we had all our snow equipment on display today from the DPW open house. Oh, I missed it. Oh. I... Including uh, the beast? No, we had the beast tucked away for something else. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, we have a recreation department. Uh, finance uh, number six. Ah, oh, finance department. Mr. DePietro. Hello. Howdy. Um, here tonight seeking approval to uh, fill vacancy in, in the control of uh, division within finance, uh, the senior accountant position. Uh, recently became vacant uh, with the incumbent uh, without a returning leave. And, Grown family, so decided to um, um, stay home. Um, this position is really a jack of all trades, a um, number of responsibilities um, to help us um, uh, reconcile accounts, um, review all cash receipts, um, as well as oversee all the um, warrant process, which is basically check uh, account payable checks um, for town wide, town school. Um, we do almost uh, about 20,000 checks a year. Um, this person was the one that coordinates that whole process. So very busy, uh, busy position. Uh, approval. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Petro? Mm -mm. Seems like this is an important position, and I uh, presume you'll be uh, working with HR uh, to uh, uh, get a, a large, diverse pool of uh, applicants. I do have one question yep. for Mr. DiPietro. Uh It says in the job description under skills that this position is responsible for running crystal reports. I was under the impression that with the adoption of the MUNA system, uh, we weren't running crystal reports anymore. Is that true or? Uh, no, it's, it's a combination. Okay. Uh, there's still crystal reports um, as well as this, this individual help train um, new people as they come on board with okay. the financial system without MUNIS as well as uh, crystal reports. But the majority are MUNIS reports now or? Okay. Okay. I'll move that we uh, approve the filling of the senior accountant vacancy in the controller division of the finance department. All those in favor, please say aye. Select person Franco. Aye. Select person Miller. Aye. Select person Green. Aye. Select person Hamilton. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Thank you. 
Thank you. And we have uh, two items of appointing department heads. First one is a uh, um, question of appointing uh, Diane, uh, Assistant uh, Recreation Director Lee Jackson as the Acting Recreation Department Director, effective June 12th. Mr. Collector? Yes, uh, Chair, um, as you know, uh, Lisa Paradis has submitted her resignation and um, we want to uh, obviously begin a, uh, a robust process, competitive process to fill that position. But meanwhile, uh, we wanted to have uh, the department uh, running efficiently during that time period. and. We have a very qualified assistant director, uh, Lee Jackson. She was hired about a year ago, um, actually, but uh, she's very qualified and interested, and I would recommend that uh, uh, she be appointed for the period, uh, an indefinite period, but I think uh, through the fall, um, and uh, that would commence on June 12, 2018. So it's, oh, and um, the Town Administrator Act requires any appointment of a recreation director to first be uh, any recommendation to be authorized by the Park and Recreation Commission, and they have done so. Okay. Ms. Jackson. Any questions, comments from the board? So I'll move that we appoint uh, Assistant Recreation Director Lee Jackson as the Acting Recreation Department Director, effective June 12th. All those in favor, please say aye. Select person Franco. Aye. Select person Heller. Aye. Select person Green. Aye. Select person Hamilton. Aye. And the chair votes aye. aye. <clears throat> and uh, we have another uh, acting uh, uh, department head, and this one is for uh, human resources. Yes, and also uh, Senator Ball has resigned her position as uh, human resources director, and again, um, this will require uh, a, a fair amount of time to. Uh, to organize a uh, search process. Uh, in this case, uh, I am recommending that the town appoint uh, an acting director who is uh, uh, outside of our system. It's a woman that I have worked with in the past. Uh, she's now retired, uh, so she's limited to how much she can work, but uh, she is able to provide us three days per week. Um, and I believe that will be sufficient through the summer months, a uh, number of projects that she can work on. and. Uh, there's a, there is a staff there that's also very qualified. So in this case, um, her, her name is Diane Crimmins. Um, you have her resume attached. I uh, can assure you that I work with Diane and know her to be a very uh, competent and reliable person, and I think she'll fit in very well during this interim period. So it's my recommendation uh, that Diane Crimmins be appointed Acting Human Resources Director, and that will be effective tomorrow. Okay. Any questions or comments from the board? Um, when, when do you, uh, one question I have is when do you see the, uh, the process of beginning for the permanent director, finding the permanent director? I would say um, sometime after Labor Day. Okay. Okay, I will move that we appoint Diane Crimmins as Acting Human Resources Director effective Tomorrow, May 23rd. All those in favor, please say aye. Select person Franco. Aye. Select person Heller. Aye. Select person Green. Aye. Select person Hamilton. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Okay. Um, moving on to warrant, uh, warrant articles. Um, I'm going to, there, there are a number of items in the budget that uh, we're not in lockstep with the advisory committee and I'd like us to consider them. It's one or two items. So there are currently two items, but I, I think they're doing some work across the hall that they put you in line with some of them. Okay. So we'll try and juggle if we can. Um, I know they're they're talking about Article 7 right now. If you wanted to try and take on 26 and then I can run across and see if I have an update for you. That might okay. Be a way to go. Then um, let's, and I see at least one of the petitioners. They're both here. Oh, they're both here. Mm -hmm. For 26. Yeah. So um, let me. Our motion is what we should be looking at. I 
think it's, is it in the, this is Article 26. Is there a motion to moderate? I don't have that motion. Sure, it's came, it was in the original combined report. Oh, yes, sir. So page uh, 26 two. So I, uh, we didn't consider this? Are you, are you talking about 26, yes. supplement one? Supplement one? That's the advisory committee supplement recommendation. Okay, so they're recommending no action. That's right. We recommended what, no action? No action. Mm -hmm. um, we had one extension, thank you. Um, Would you like to know that they the, commission, the Commission for Diversity, Inclusion, and Humanization heard our article the other night, and they, they suggested, I, I don't know, love, uh, favorable action. So we got one favorable action out of it. Okay, so on page um, 22.6, uh, 26.2, there's a motion to refer the subject matter. So uh, is there any, um, any desire to reconsider? Well, so I, I chaired a committee that looked at least in part in this, uh, this concept. So let me ask the question of what are you looking for a moderators committee to do that the, um, the select Board's Committee on Senior Tax Policy didn't do? Is it, is it a s significantly different charge than the, the select? It's a different population. We're so looking at, at there, are, there are programs now that are moved to the Senior Tax Policy Committee and they're looking at the Senior Service Breaker married final jointly income level. Mm -hmm. so that population, we are asking that there be consideration they will, that, those, that group of people will continue to pay their property taxes, mm -hmm. will continue to pay the yearly two and a half percent. The overrides and debt exclusions will be added to the base. Mm -hmm. But for future overrides and debt exclusions, just that piece, which this year I'm told is going to be 400 something, Someone said the that one piece be exempted the people who are over 70 years of age pay property taxes in the law. So my fall into that income. Right, but my question was we've already had one committee that's looked at this. Is there a new bit of information that that, that wasn't that wasn't our article and your subcommittee when we looked at it? That wasn't So if there was a different article then we said, you know, eight and above we had it was not means tested, it didn't have anything. Right now, yep. there's a piece of a super-prime population that really needs to be looked at, needs some attention, needs some thought, mm -hmm. and um, we've got a proposal that we could play with, do something, but that we'd like to have some people look at that part of the population that right now does not have. Right. So, yeah. I, I, I hear what you're saying, that the, the details are different. I would argue that the, uh, the reason that the um, former committee didn't uh, endorse this idea um, was for uh, reasons unconnected to the details. It was a, uh, uh, a, uh, a hesitance to um, shift the burden from uh, one group of taxpayers to another. So, um, shift the burden in yep. terms of helping the kids. Um, I, I would, at another time, like to have a conversation about shifting the burden. Okay. Happy to have it. Okay. I have a question. But I'm, I'm wondering, we don't, you know, we don't have any facts about what the burden is. Mm -hmm. So, you know, until we know that. And that's one of the pieces. I feel that that could be is one of the things that could be examined, and I, I don't know whether that's, that's an easily that's an accessible fact, 
but we ought to know that. And um, yeah. we add this to our as, as background information. So one of the things we have there is, you know the cost of the town for future years, and it would only apply to future overrides and debt exclusion. Uh, I know because Barry McCabe has spent a lot of hours asking questions and helping me out with this. Um, you know, we won't, we know how many people would fall in the 70 and over, but we don't know their income, so there's no way to know how many would be able to do this. It would be an application, a yearly application, that would you have to make the application fill it up, um, come up with the things that you want. My thing is income that meets that thing and, and uh, show your tax return, whatever. Whatever process works out best for this article, but it would be, they would have to take the initiative and, and apply for it and meet the requirements. And they'd have to do that year before they just want to be done. And it strikes me that there could be some sort of a cap on the amount um, so you that if 20 people apply and there's a cap, you know, the, the, the amount could be divided among the 20 people uh, depending upon income or whatever. I mean, I'm not, I'm just making up numbers now because I have no idea. <coughs> yeah. If it's 100 people, it would, you know, each person would receive less. Or, yeah, Gary McKay, when we were talking about this, assumed maybe looking at Article 25, because Article 25 also spoke to a group of people 65 and above, but um, by the, looking at just what it would be, that it wouldn't be everything else, that he thought that it might cost less than Article 25, but we won't know that until the first year when we see how many people apply. But anyway, there are a lot of questions and a lot of things that can happen to make this, but if we could get it to a committee to look and answer some of these questions or think about other ways, just so that this particular population could be looked at. So my, my thinking is um, this is going to, in the end, have to be a home rule petition. Mm -hmm. And we have another warrant article attacking the problem, but in a different way, using, right. a, using a framework that, ex that exists mm -hmm. that I think it would have a better shot. The other one is, is a tweak on a, on a present one. Right. Yeah. So the, the, the other one, I and think, this, has a... But this one be going in at the same time. By the time this is done, it'll be maybe a year from now. By the time the moderators committee says they're coming back, or we go back to town meeting or whatever. And it is a different thing, so... Now, I get that. Yeah. But my thinking is let's wait to see what happens with the other one, because... If the other one doesn't make it, don't, don't, don't say that. Uh, if the other one doesn't make it, surely the this one, which, which uses a very different framework, um, well, isn't going to so make it. That's a long delay. That's a long delay between now and by the time that other one goes from here to the state house, gets approved, comes back, and gets in. So you're saying that after that, then we can start the process for this one. That's years. Well, I, I would think that it would take some time to get the facts and get the information. That's that we what we'd need. like to start it now. And uh, you know, the moderators committee could just could make a recommendation that we wait until the other thing is done. I mean, I. I don't see that it hurts to start the process now. Well, so let's not lose track uh, track of the fact that we passed a uh, several warrant articles dealing with senior tax policy a year ago, and those petitions to the legislature still have not been acted upon favorably. So we're we're queuing up several proposals here, which may be wise, it may be unwise, but just to set a well, uh, a basis of facts here. We're it does it does allow it does let the legislature know that we're really concerned about this problem and that we would want some action. And, uh, you know, I would think that that's a good message. So, is it, um, so we, we, we have a no action recommendation. It will, it will require a reconsideration to change it. So I will, I will move um, reconsideration. Have you voted no action on, on this moderating committee? Oh, we process. voted 
We voted no action on the warrant article. On the warrant article. Right. So in order to change that no action, there would have to be a reconsideration. And I'm moving for that reconsideration. I intend to vote no on the reconsideration. On the article or on the, on the moderator's plan? It's it just is. just a procedural to get to it. Oh, to get to the, uh, the, the, the You have to open up the article to get to the moderator's right. committee. Yes, Thank you. So all those in favor of a reconsideration, please say aye. Select person Franco. No. Select person Heller. Aye. Select person Green. No. Select person Hamilton. Abstain. And chair votes no. So our, our recommendation is not changing. Have you reconsidered the motion to we just, we, we just, just voted to reconsider. And it, it failed. It failed. So we're sticking with our we're initial sticking with our initial recommendation. Okay. So, you, okay, so, the, so the referral doesn't get another vote on it. Okay. That was the vote. Okay. So, so you but you've got a shot at town meeting. Yeah, so. and you've got the advisory committee. No. No. She's well, got the DICR committee. Oh, the, yeah, the DICR committee. Okay, the subcommittee of the advisory. <laughs> okay. Okay. So uh, let's let's talk about the budget since we are we will be dealing with that tonight. Um, so the the one item I know we're in we're not in agreement with advisory is Cypress Field, which is uh, is a motion by Brian Hockleutner is the lead with Claire and Scott as participants. Um, anyone else I should? No. Nope. You guys are it. Um, which in effect says um, um, for Cypress Field, uh, it, it places a condition in two spots in the warrant article. One is for the item 48 Cypress Playground, uh, no money uh, can be uh, used for the design, uh, procurement, or construction uh, in furtherance of installing plastic turf. And then in the high school appropriation, um, it, it has a, uh, a similar uh, restriction. The advisory recommendation, the advisory motion, has language that says that before money can be spent on Cypress Field, it needs to come back to town meeting. The selectman's motion um, is just a clean motion. So the question is, we have, we have the Hockleutner motion, the advisory motion, and then the select board's motion. Um, should we change our recommendation? And uh, we have the petitioners here for the Hockleutner um, motion, and they didn't have an opportunity to uh, 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 pitch us. So I'll give them that opportunity. Do we have a report on what the advisory has done? So they're still debating Cypress Field. Um, <laughs> right. And I don't have an update for you on that, but they, I do, I can tell you that the Capital Subcommittee um, approved the board's language under the roadway um, special appropriation. So you could, um, I think, I oh, think okay. that requires you to reopen it, but um, it seems like we're in line with that item. Okay, so we don't have to reconsider. So, Not for that item. right. So uh, basically, uh, that uh, that item had language that required notification of the um, advisory subcommittee, capital subcommittee, uh, when certain uh, uh, changes to uh, pavement and roadways would occur, and uh, uh, the town has agreed to do that administratively. Um, so to keep the, uh, so the, in, in effect, uh, the advisory is getting what they asked for, but we're not putting it into the, uh, into the uh, actual legal language. So, okay, so that doesn't require. No, because uh, your, your position is now in line with theirs. Okay. Um, as long as the full committee agrees with the subcommittee's recommendation, so. So Claire, <laughs> <laughs> you're the last, you're the, ah, okay. <laughs> Here's Brian. <laughs> Has advisory done its thing? No, not the board yet. They're talking about this 
same issue. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, you guys haven't had a, your shot at pitching us, so this is it. Um, I don't know how. Step up to the, um, step up to the mic, so our vast uh, uh, TV audience can uh, can hear it. It may not be vast, but it does exist. <laughs> <laughs> okay, is there a camera somewhere? Oh, it's over here. Yeah. Um, Brian Hochleitner, town meeting member, precinct six. I'm one of the co-sponsors of the motion on Article Seven related to two budget items, item 48 and item 71. Um, so I think you all have received the letter that was signed by 14 out of the 15 town meeting members from our precinct, Precinct 6, which is the, the precinct we're in today, and the precinct where Cypress Park, which is across the field, is located. And I won't go into all the arguments about turf versus grass. There's sort of two elements to our motion. Um, we were, in some ways, picking up on the same issue that um, the select board has differed with advisory on in item 71, which is um, effectively process and how much of the safe town meeting should have on the issue of grass versus turf at Cyprus. And I'll just go back and tell a little bit about the process because we've been following it very closely. Um, so last July, Parks and Rec announced that they were going to have three scoping sessions for Cypress Field and specifically identified the issue that they wanted to decide in those scoping sessions, whether to install plastic turf or grass on the field. And those were very well attended. Um, I will say, you know, this is my opinion characterizing it, that the people who were there from the neighborhood were primarily interested in, you know, this is a park to them, and so they wanted to keep grass. And then there was a, a significant group that was also there that primarily doesn't live in the neighborhood, not entirely, but lives in other neighborhoods, but is soccer players and similar field sports that, that you know, pointed out Brookline has a shortage of field sports. This is a, one that they would like to have more hours of playtime on. And so that, that has really been an issue. At the end of the three scoping sessions, though, rather than picking a side or splitting the baby or any option, Parks and Rec said, we're gonna punt on this. We're not gonna decide right now. We'll figure it out later as part of design process. Even though, even though there are significant budget differences. So the field area, which is three and a half acres of grass today, if it was converted to artificial turf, would cost approximately $2 million for that, that bit of the work. Um, grass is about 500000 so that's a $1.5 million shift in the cost or increase in the cost of the project. And looking at the overall construction budget for that park, that's 30% change. It's a 30% change in the budget. And after telling the community, including you know, the town meeting members from our precinct, that Parks and Rec hadn't made a decision. They've now asked town meeting to fund a higher amount for turf, and then five minutes ago, or 10 minutes ago, um, several of the Parks and Rec commissioners said they didn't think it was possible to do any other options. So um, we feel compelled to bring this motion. Um, our precinct is nearly unanimous. It's close almost, I mean, we didn't quite get there. It was very close to being unanimous. And people feel strongly, and this is something that we think town meetings should decide. It should not be decided, it should not be delegated to Parks and Rec or further delegated, which I think Parks and Rec is contemplating of, I mean, they're appointed by the select board, and then they appoint the design commission, and they're gonna let the design commission decide this issue. I, I just don't think that's right. I think town meeting is the legislature for Brookline. They're the most democratic body. They, um, they have the purse strings. And this is a budget issue. And so we have drafted our motion in such a way that it, it will not slow the process down. If they want to go forward with engineering studies, surveys, design development in furtherance of turf, which is the lower budget amount, that I think town meetings should approve that and let them go forward. But if they want to spend that extra money and make that fundamental change to the park, I think they should come back to town meeting. And they could do that at any future town meeting 
We're not binding the hands of anyone. This is not a motion that you can never, ever change this. But we don't think it's appropriate to, for town meeting to effectively write a blank check on a project where there's no scope that's agreed upon. It, there's been no communication with the community. This is, this is a process that's not worked in the normal way. The normal way is you, you make a scoping determination, you make decisions about the basic elements of a capital project, and when it's in the budget, town meeting looks at it, and there's, I'm sure you can all think of examples where there was some $40,000 budget item where we spent 10 minutes with someone going back and forth, like, what's this money for? Do we really need to spend it? This is an item where it's, it's kind of buried because it's in the high school budget project, which is a massive project. And someone said, oh, it's only 0.7% of that project. But that's, not, that's really not an accurate way to think about it. The park itself, this is about a 30% shift in the, in the project. But I think it's, it's much more than a budget issue. It's a fundamental policy issue that you know, should be, the town meeting members should know that if you vote on this, and don't um, adopt this language in the motion, or further, actually, if, if you don't adopt advisory's motion on 71, which, which we support as a, as a sort of a fallback position, <coughs> if our motion's not successful, that Parks and Rec never has to come back, and town meeting is really not gonna have a say on that issue. And maybe that's, some people think that's okay, I, I, I don't, so thank you. Um, I'm looking for the language, the advisory language, and I'm not finding it. Um, it's on uh, what? It's on seven seven. Seven seven. That's where the select board motion striking it. Seven. Seven dash seven. Seven dash seven of the combined reports. Ah. So the, uh, the language is with the condition that no money related to the construction of Cypress Field can be encumbered or, or expended without a vote of town meeting relevant to the material for the field. So I've, I, I, think, I, I think it would be good if we come in with, um, that there are two motions on the floor of town meeting rather than three on this mm -hmm. one. And uh, my thinking is um, this isn't going to happen for a couple of years. Three years. And um, that it's okay to, to leave it to town meeting in the end. Um, while that's not the normal way of doing it, um, I think given the controversy and, and I think it would be a good thing to, to actually have two motions rather than three. I think three motions is kind of overkill, confusing. Mm -hmm. um, so my my thought is to come into agreement with the advisory, and that's 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 my thinking. So and that, over what advisory is proposing? Final go to page seven seven. The, so the, take taken out the the language that's crossed out. We would put it back in. So that basically um, so it's construction the field. It doesn't blow it up. It just says before before construction of Cypress Field can money they can spend money on it. It's got to come back to town meeting. It's gonna. So, so town meeting basically holds it hostage. Yeah, basically. Yeah. But I don't think that's appropriate. Okay. Yeah, but if I can make another uh, statement, um, I've heard a lot of discussion on this issue of the precinct saying that because we are unified behind this proposal, that should trump everything else. Well. That, that's, that's the tone I get, that, that because the precinct is, is so behind this, um, that that really is more important than some of the other uh, concerns. And I just want to say that you know, we're a town, you know, not a precinct, and I think people should be very careful about you know, suggesting that the interests of the soccer you know, uh, 
soccer teams and all the other people from other parts of town are not as important as concerns of the people in that precinct. Um, I, I just yeah, think that I, that's... I, I don't think that that's what we're suggesting, that they're not important. I actually think that we have a shortage of soccer fields. We have, we have a, a major issue. It's a town-wide issue. It's not a Cypress Field issue, a shortage of soccer fields at Cypress Field in my mind. Maybe some people will disagree with that. I would love to see more thoughtful, you know, sit down and, and come up with a list of investments that we could make to address that. I don't think that's what's happening here. And I don't think it's, I, I take exception um, to the suggestion that Precinct 6 is asserting their interest over others. Our precinct has had the highest turnout in, you know, many elections. We had the highest margin for the override, including the fact that Brookline High School expansion is happening in our precinct and we welcomed it with opening arms and we were not, I mean, there's, you, you guys know better than anybody, that's, building a school in this town is not an easy thing. Um, yeah, we've discovered we're that. Nimby, <laughs> we're not a NIMBY community, we're not doing this for NIMBY reasons. This is a, you know, it's, it's a, and, you know, I worked on, in park design projects, and it's a political process. You know, it's, it's rare that there's just a great consensus around everything. Um, people care a lot about their parks. You know, I think one way to think about it is you've got two uses that, that are in conflict here a little bit. You've got a soccer field. There's two baseball fields, but I think that's less of an issue. And a soccer field that gets a lot of use. And if you convert it to turf, the feeling among a lot of the neighborhood is that they won't really have the opportunity to use that park the way they use it today for certain uses. And, and I think that cuts across different generations. It, it's felt differently by certain people. Um, I played soccer. My kids played soccer. My kids are on travel and rec soccer right now. They play lacrosse. They play baseball. They're, all, they're doing all those things. I'm not doing this as a anti-soccer thing or... Um, Anyway, I, I just feel like um, it's a difficult issue. I think that we would like to see town meeting make the decision, make the ultimate decision. And, and we don't think that it's, we don't think it's the normal process for Parks and Rec to hold three scoping sessions, say we haven't decided, and then there's a budget item that proves that, that and it just never goes back to it. I think we need to have a process that feel good about, even if they don't like the outcome, that they feel like the process will be Well, I think one of the things that you're not comprehending uh, as clearly as you might is that the budget uh, of $205.6 million um, is the first stab at what it would cost to renovate the high school comprehensively, to build Cypress, to build the Cypress building, to fix the science wing, to make improvements to tap in in front of the pool, and to make improvements to Cypress. And right now our thinking is that we need the 5.8 million for Cypress, and we need X million for the, for the, the building uh, at, at 111, and we would need X million for the science wing, but in the process of design development, which we haven't done yet, that's the next step. And it may well be that those things shift and change. Um, we, uh, we've committed ourselves, at least I certainly have, to living within this $205.6 million, $205 million. We've always done that in the past with debt exclusions. And if we end up going over, we'll have to cut. And that's a painful process. I hope we don't have to do it, but uh, we will if we have to. But in the meantime, we need a budget that's fluid enough that we can accommodate um, the things that we need and accommodate the cost escalation that we know is coming. We're in a very difficult construction um, um, cycle. cycle. Well, really, atmosphere um, for uh, because it's just ballooning, and um, no one knows when that's going to end. No one knows uh, 
when the ax is going to fall. I hope it falls sooner than later in terms of construction and leave everything else alone. Um, and I go, to my, I go to bed at night praying for that uh, because we will get more for our buck. But um, we, we just can't say that right now. So um, while turf may cost, you know, three times more than, than grass right now, it might not be, and you never know what's coming. Turf te technology is changing constantly. So why should the decision be made now when we're three years out from the process even starting? The design process is not going to begin until 2021, and that process goes on for some time. We don't, the construction piece of Cypress Field, the actual construction, won't happen until the end of the project because we don't want, um, you know, there's going to be some walking back and forth and some uh, construction vehicles in the neighborhood. We don't want to, uh, we want that to be the last thing because it's the most easily affected and damaged by uh, people who are on site, et cetera. So um, we want to, uh, you know, we don't really know, we don't really have a decent schedule yet a firm schedule because we haven't hired uh, a uh, CM at risk. We haven't, you know, we're imagining that this would be the schedule and some people think that it would be the fall of 2022 before um, we're able to actually finish the construction of the Cypress building and begin the construction of the park. I'm not saying that that's what will happen. I don't know. And I'm being very honest, I don't know. Um, but um, I think that it's important for us to make this type of decision. It's a serious decision, and clearly many people are very passionate about it. Um, but I think it's important to know, to make the decision when we're closer to knowing the facts. And we just don't know them now. We just don't. So let me come at Selectman Heller's um, central point there from a different direction, and I'll uh, I won't bury the headline here. I'm uh, likely to support the advisory committee motion. Uh, I'm not going to support. Do we have an update? Yeah, they stayed with their original. Okay. Yeah. No restriction on the design money and um, the restriction on the construction funds. Okay. But I'm, I'm not going to support the the Hook Lightner. Um, um, Englander in, in Stamfler motion. Um, and uh, why is because uh, uh, when we were doing the, the debt exclusion, which is going to pay for the high school renovation and expansion, we made a public promise that we weren't going to make this decision now. It was going to get pushed back a few years. Um, and uh, I am unwilling to go back on that on that commitment. Um, ultimately, uh, if town meeting has a, a hand in making the decision, that's fine with me. But I think um, we made a commitment about when the decision was going to be made. Uh, and I am unable to say if people uh, aren't showing up today to participate in the conversation under the assumption that um, there's no decision being made in the, in the near term. So I think in order to live up to, to my word, um, which I uh, uh, disclose to people numerous times in conversations about the debt exclusion, we have to push this decision off uh, until, um, until a, future, a future meeting at time meeting or at least a future date. Let me make a further point about that. Um, I think that one of the things that we've always done, and we have certainly have bylaws about this actually, I wouldn't say we always have, but much more recently we have. We've had extensive public process and hearings, public hearings about this, uh, about controversial topics, topics that matter. We have them, even though they may not go to town meeting, we have them about 40 Bs, we have them about um, transportation board issues, we have them, um, in, in terms of warrant articles, we have a public hearing on every single warrant article. And we've never had a public hearing about this particular warrant article. Even though it's a budget article, it's submitted very late in the process. We've never, and no committee has really looked at it. Uh, other committee, you know, the select board and the advisory committee have looked at it to some extent. But we haven't done what a normal exhaustive review of a uh, warrant article. We don't. We haven't examined all the facts. We haven't made a public deliberation. We haven't uh, engaged in uh, listening to, to people in the public come to us and give us comments. 
and I think that's a um, that's I'm trying to find the right word. Uh, I think that that's not fair, actually, to the public. It's not what our process has been. And we may come out to the decision you want. I'm not saying we won't, but we're not gonna, we won't get there by, by this method. We won't, we won't have the kind of public input and process that we should have if we do it by, this, by your method. Yeah, can I just react to that for a second? Um, one is that this is not a Warren article. It's a motion on the budget, and we- Well, the budget's a Warren article. Right, I understand, but we, we didn't bring the Warren article for the budget. We, we're reacting to reading the combined reports when we get them. I, we were not sort of waiting in the weeds to try to sneak one past anyone on this. this no, I'm is, not saying you were, okay. but I, I think you need to think about the consequences of trying to do something which really undercuts a public well, process. Well, I, I don't think it does, and I think that, again, it's sort of, you have to step back and look at the process as a whole. Again, there was a... In my experience, there's, there's stages in this process. There's scoping determination, and you can make these kinds of basic decisions about one direction or the other on the project. It's not, this is not a design development level. Design development is after you've done schematics and you've kind of, there, there's stages. There's, there's sort of scoping, there's conceptual design, there's schematic design, then there's design development, then you have the bid documents, and, and each step, you're kind of refining the design and, and making finer tuned kind of changes. And this is one that's really kind of the fundamental early beginning before the process, and really in my mind at the budget stage that you know we should be talking about this. And so part of our language was to make sure not to, we're, we can't, we're not binding any future town meeting. We're not saying that this can never be done. We're saying that these two bu budget items that we're approving tonight, I think we're gonna approve these tonight, that these funds, as we appropriate them, can't be used for this purpose. That's this extra money that wasn't part of the scope that was ever approved or anything. And someone can always come back and say, we've now had further scoping meetings. We've met with the community. We've come up with this plan that not everyone loves, but you know, we've gotten some cobbled together, some consensus over it. You know. But you're assuming it. you're assuming that the artificial turf and natural grass have a ratio, a cost ratio that exists now. That may not be true in three years. It's existed since, I mean, I, I worked for New York City Parks starting in the mid 90s. I mean, the, the, the ratio has gone up, it's gone the other direction. It was two to one when I was in New York, it's three to one, or I, I it's, uh, sorry, 25% to, to, to <laughs> it's four to one, four to one, actually, if you look at the. So, a select person Hamilton. Thank you. So um, uh, maybe I'm missing something because uh, I, I interpreted this motion to just ask town meeting to kind of weigh in on this issue when we get further along. Is that an incorrect assessment? Okay. That's the advisory motion. I right, think. the advisory motion. Okay. The this advisory is. motion would, would effectively say that before you break ground, Mm -hmm. on anything that's Cypress related. It, actually, if you read the language, it doesn't encumber, it doesn't slow down the design process for the high school. You can move forward and design that building and build it, basically. And if, you, and if Cypress is being done as a separate contract at a later phase, come back to town meeting then. I mean, that's, that's what the advisory committee allows you to do. Okay. And our motion effectively does the same thing. It's just that we look at advisories and it didn't touch the design money, and we said, and you said you've got to come back to town meeting, but you didn't put that same encumbrance on the design money, and the design money actually talks about preparing bid documents, and we, we're town meeting, we don't know, you guys probably have more information about the schedule and things like that. We're, we're voting on these items tonight, and it says, approve bid documents. Well, Cyprus but the, 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 the practical, yes, no. yeah, the, the for practical purposes, um, they, they, I don't think th they're going to go so far as to spend all the money that's required for bid doc documents and then, and then come to town meeting asking for construction money. Uh, that, that, that would be a waste. So it's, it seems to me, well, the, the, there's Mr. Bain. Um, 
and he, he can probably address this. Um, but it, 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 it seems to me the, the, they would they would be coming to town meetings earlier than that's just the way it, the way it would work, I think. So the the question is if if with, with the advisory motion, I'm looking at Nancy and John. With the advisory motion, if that passes, um, you go through your public process, you make a decision, yes, we want grass, yes, we want turf, or, or both, or some combination. You find some compromise everyone's happy with. Um, at that point, you would come to town meeting under the advisory motion. You wouldn't then engage someone just to to do the detailed drawings and, right. and, and you know construction drawings right right That's the way I am. yeah because that that would you you, you want to know that it's going to pass town meeting yeah I, I mean the way I understood it from Harry's oh we need you to yeah our, our, so our vast TV oh, so, so our vast TV audience <laughs> can can hear you oh you want TV so the way I understand it is that if um, the advisory committee's motion passes, that before the construction dollars are allocated or the documents are created, that it would have to go for a vote at a town meeting. That's my understanding of Harry's motion. So the advisory, say, the advisory committee's last motion. Is that what you asked me? Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, so yes, yeah, so, you know, the design would be relatively similar in terms of it's going to be grass, or it's going to be synthetic. But, you know, this is what we, you know, this is what we decided on, and this is what we have come to, and you know, then it gets. I'm guessing that if it's grass and the uh, town meeting votes, we don't want grass, we want synthetic, that we would go back and, and go that route, look at it again, or vice versa. Or vice versa. Right. So is. Uh, are you guys at Park and Rec, are you guys okay with the advisory motion? I am. Okay. The advisory motion that was made when we were there you know, two weeks so, ago. So, and you guys haven't deliberated on it, it's just you, no. you're speaking yes. personally. Right speaking now. personally. Okay. Yes. Right, because we have not met uh, as a commission. Since right, then. okay. Just to be clear, right. this has been no. Well, I mean, also no. we have a choice, if, you know, if, if it goes through. So right now, it's, right now, though, the way Carla was saying it, is if the, uh, the advisory amendment failed that would still come before our town meeting for the construction dollars. Maybe, uh, <laughs> so there, there would still be an opportunity to um, rescind some of the budget authorization because like, very likely this money would not have been spent. So <laughs> regardless of whether or not there's a condition on the appropriation, there very likely is an opportunity to pull back. Right, because our practice is not to spend the money, to have it authorized before we're going to spend it. But So and typically with park projects, um, especially where we're commingling, a, a lot of times they say, you know, they put restrictive language to say don't spend money on construction until the design, design review process has gone forward, um, which is very similar to what this, this conditional language does as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, we, we need to, we're getting, we're hitting the, uh, the clock. So, um, so I I just want to say that I do support the um, hook or uh, um, uh, what supplemental or motion, um, just because I I do see um, maybe a gap in our process, and I hope that if this should pass, that if if anything, those that are on find themselves on the losing side feel like they were part of a robust process. Okay, so what I'd like to do is a move reconsideration. Um, all those in favor of reconsideration say aye. Select person Franco. No. Select person Heller. No. Select person Green. No. Select person uh, Hamilton. Aye. Uh, chair votes aye. Three, two, we're not reconsidering. We're going in with our unencumbered motion. Okay. <laughs> and uh, that concludes. We're adjourned. <laughs>